Hey, again, I have two pieces of free agency news for you. Okay, first piece of news is per John Heyman and MLBTradeRumors.com, and it involves Johnny Cueto, veteran, 37-year-old, right-handed starting pitcher. He's actually joining the Marlins on a one-year deal, $6 million base, but there's an option, a club option for 2024 at $10.5 million or a $2.5 million buyout. So he's going to make at least $8.5 million with the Marlins. And why is this one interesting? Well, the Marlins just recently put four of their starters on the trading block, four of them. They're that deep in pitching, okay? And they want to use pitching to get potentially a an offensive player, right? So, and we know that they've, they've talked about Brian Reynolds. They've talked to the Marlins about Cedric Mullins. They have the pitching to offer to get one of these guys. So, and so stay tuned on that. We're going to add, this, is going, this one's going to be interesting, but I'll, I'll also point this out. None of the pitchers that are on the starting block are named Sandy Alcantara. The 2022 Scion Award winner. And I think he might have been Derek Jeter's last mover. He locked him up for about a five-year, I think it was around 50 or $55 million deal. So now this looks like an absolute highway robbery that the Marlins got. So um, the reigning Scion Award winner for 10 or $11 million bucks per year, <clears throat> which is crazy. And he's young, he's controllable, he's a big arm. But the other names, we know Pablo Lopez and a couple of these other guys are up for grabs. So it well, remains to be seen as to where and who's going to get these guys, and whether all four of them are going to be traded. But they need offensive pieces, and they've got attractive trade trade chips to, to get them. So stay tuned. The Marlins are definitely not done. Now let me pivot to the second part of free agency. This is Carlos Correa, and this is from Ken Rosenthal, and also MLB trade rumors, okay? The Twins are back in the bidding now, okay? And apparently the bidding of the negotiations are starting to hit, pick up steam with him and the Twins. Now they initially offered him a 10-year, $280 million deal which was rejected in favor of the Giants uh, San Francisco Giants huge contract I think it was 350 million which fell through because of a failed physical which allowed the Mets to jump in and they initially agreed I think it was 315 million dollars for 12 or 13 years something like that and that's hasn't officially fallen through yet but it's in danger of falling through which has allowed an opening of the twins to get back in okay just like the Mets jumped in when as soon as that physical failed with the Giants so and now the Mets have not said they're out yet, but they've said they're willing to walk if this just gets ridiculous because it's been a while now. It's been a couple of weeks, and it still hasn't been resolved. So, And we know with Scott Boris, things are going to drag out. They're going to try to maneuver as much stuff and, and, and squeeze as much money out of a team as possible. At the very least, this, his contract is probably going to be abbreviated, and maybe Scott Boris is waiting to see who's winning the bite and abbreviate less than the other team. So... We just don't know what's going to happen. But one way or another, Carlos Correa is going to get paid. But the Twins are back in. Negotiations are heating up. And again, it's going to put the Mets on the hot spot now. So what do the Mets do? <clears throat> we don't know. We have no idea what the Mets are going to do. But it's fascinating one way or the other. But those are the two pieces of news I have for you this morning. Um, it's starting to pick up a little bit. Yesterday, there was quite a few videos. And go take a look at them if you haven't seen them yet. I mean, a lot of signings yesterday. Uh, and, and even a shakeup at the Yes Network. I linked the article from the New York Post down below so you can read that one as well with Cameron Maben and, and Carlos uh, uh, Beltran and Paul O'Neill and, and some other play, people mentioned like Derek Jeter. But the Yes Network is uh, shaking things up a little bit. So take a look at that. Got a couple of players signed yesterday too. And this is what happens if, you, if you're following this free agency. There's like nothing at all for three days and then we'll get a day of craziness. And we already have a day of activity today, so I'm surprised. We may get a couple of more moves today. And like I said, there's probably 100-plus guys, at least, that need to be signed still. You know, a lot of the best at each position are, for the most part, signed. Obviously, Carlos Correa is not signed yet. And there's some other players. And then Brandon Belt is also headed to Toronto, so a former giant. So given, uh, given the uh, Blue Jays another offensive piece to go along with the guys that they've already brought in. So, you know, another move by an AL East team. Arrival of the Yankees, so and the Yankees obviously need to address the left field position too. And I this, but there's still five and five plus weeks of spring training, so teams are not done yet. So let's just it's important to keep that one in mind too. Teams are not done yet, and we know how the Yankees sometimes wait till the very last minute or tries to drag things out. So Cashman likes to pay less, and people like to ask for more. So that's why sometimes negotiations take forever with the Yankees. But we'll see what happens. Anything is anything else comes out, you will get it accurately. You'll get it immediately and I'll keep it coming. Talk to you later again.